ABC Thursdays. Welcome back. Grey's Anatomy is all new. Why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? The drama going down. Bungee jumping from the bridge is cord snap. We need all hands on deck. Is unbelievable. You think you're God's gift to this hospital? You're just another doctor. My relationship with Catherine is complicated. I'm gonna sue you. Your lawyers know where to find me. You're unbelievable. Grey's Anatomy. All new Thursdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. This episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash MBO. Terms and conditions apply. For the non-patrons listening to the audio feed, Anita is not here. She found a way to escape. She's out hanging with her friends right now. So it's just me, Chris, and a very special guest. The first person to take us up on the offer of being actually on the Patreon pick with us. Mr. Seth Blackwell. Seth Blackwell. How you doing today? Somebody Excellent. I'm reverberating from a bill collector. Hold on, let me turn my, my phone up. All right, there we go. I ain't got a lot of notes. I don't doubt it. So we might as well just go in and get in there. This can either be an hour or two or three. It all depends on where we all. Oh, he got notes. Oh, shit. This might be long, <laughs> man. Because I like legit, this is what I got. Like that little one paragraph right there. Notes? What are those? I know, right? We don't do that here. Yeah, we do. We got to. I would have never remembered none of this movie if I didn't. No, nah, it's like it's like uh, going into Wakanda and bowing. We, we, we don't do that here. We don't do that here. Well, I tell you what we do do here, Chris. It's theme music. So let's give it to yeah, him so we do. get this started. We do do that. Theme music. Damn right. Home video hustle, 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 home video hustle. Hey yo, Brent watching movies with Chris and Cam and talking shit about the movies with the fans. Special guest Patreon picks in the best commentary on movies because we keeping it fresh. What's going on, everybody? I'm Brent. Chris? Oh, what's up? There we go. I now you you on the show now. It's official. <laughs> oh, damn, I ain't listen to this one recording. <laughs> I'm actually here. So how's it feel being live? You feel any different yet? It does. Hopefully, this does that turn into the worst episode ever. So fingers crossed. I'm no, no, we we watched Lord of the Rings already. Hey, oh, <laughs> pitchforks will be directed to the whole video hustle. That when we've been doing this since 2017, me and PJ, like I said, we got to find your movie. This could have been it, Chris, but I don't think it's big enough. <laughs> no, it's not. But uh, you, you, you know it's coming. Ah, no. Actually, I got a big question at the end of this. I can't wait to hear your answer to it. But first, episode 369 of the Home Video Hustle podcast. And damn, she ain't fine. <laughs> nice. Bars. <laughs> Gummo. We got to take it back to Slaughterhouse, Chris, and I got to ask him a question. Seth, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't heard one in a while. Why, of all the movies in the universe, Seth, why this one? I just love bizarre movies. Um, Harmony Duran, Harmony, Harmony Duran. I'm a drink. Uh, Harmony <laughs> Duran. He makes like a lot of good. Um, he makes a lot of interesting movies. This is just, like his first film. I'm a huge fan of the milk movie Belly. This movie mm. is featured in Belly, so there's that connection. So, in this, in my book, this movie will always be cool. Why was this featured in Belly? I remember when we did Belly on the podcast. I'm like, why? Because I, I know of Gummo. I've seen clips. I know what it is. But why the fuck did Hype Williams put it in Belly? I never understood that. I just assumed he was friends with the director. I don't know. I, think, I just thought directors hung out together. He just said Gummo was some hot shit, hot shit. Hot shit, hot shit. <laughs> Chris, anything? Ever heard of it? Know anything about it? No, I ain't heard, never heard a <laughs> damn thing about this beforehand. I had a feeling. And, you know, we almost oh, we almost got it. We just got there a little bit too late. But he technically gave us the movie 
before they announced it. So I'm going to continue to say that we keep doing this. But the motherfucking Criterion Collection just announced that they putting this out on a fucking 4K disc, Chris. Again. Ah! <laughs> but yeah, Gummo, I n- never seen this. I knew about it. Only, the main thing I know is that Brendan, friend of the podcast, from the What Were They Thinking podcast, fucking hates this movie. Despises this movie. Gave it a 1 out of 10, half a star on Letterbox. Said it's the worst movie ever made. And from the first, what, five minutes, I knew exactly why. I won't spoil it now, but I'll just say Brendan loves his cats. But before we get all into that, let's get the facts out the way. Patreon pick number 62 from the homie Seth Blackwell joining us in the studio today. Gummo came out in 1997, Chris. Hour and 29 minutes. How much y'all think this cost to make? I saw it earlier, so I'm not going to cheat. Ooh, Chris, it's all on you today. So it wasn't $2 in a ham sandwich? It wasn't. That's what the cats got paid. Yes, with the cast had in the movie. Is it in the millions? It actually is, surprisingly, Christopher. I'm going to say four mil. I'm going to say. Wrong! That's too high. He ain't had that much money. We're talking. You can say one or there's two numbers you can say. I'll give it to you either way because it's real close to the other one. So so you got a good shot here. Mil? So what is it? 1.5 mil. So you should have left the 0.5 out, Chris. Wrong! It's it says te- one or two mil? It's technically 1.9. If you had said one or two, I'd have gave it to you. But then you had to add the damn point five in there. Then Big Daddy can't tell you ain't no half-stepping, Chris. Damn. Whole numbers. <laughs> but one point. So almost $2 million to make gummo, Chris. Think about for that. the half-stepping. Throw it by half-stepping. Well, speaking of half-stepping, let's have some real fun. Chris, how much you think gummo made? This did come out in theaters. <laughs> mm. You want a big hint? Go low. Go very fucking low. <laughs> <laughs> 185,000. Oh. Wrong! It's 100 and something. It's just not that high. It's actually lower than that. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> 125,000. Oh, too low. Wrong! Oh, no. Sorry. You said 125? That's actually yeah. still lower than that. I'm... <laughs> wow. Gummo calls 1.9 million. It made $116,799. Yeah. Is so the worst? That we get into the theater? I mean, maybe it might have just went to those little art house theaters or the grind house. Maybe it didn't go to like the AMCs and Harkins and Regal and where the hell else is out there. But technically, it went to play a, next to the Matrix. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. In the what, same theater. What was night? What came out? Oh, Chris, the, the, people decided to go see Batman and Robin and not Gummo, Chris. I'm a spoiler. Batman and Robin is infinitely better than Gummo. I don't give a fuck what nobody <laughs> says. But you know that's ice cold. Oh, it put the gummo on ice. Kick some ice. <laughs> you will plant no roots here. No. <laughs> Stay cool, bad boy. See, I even curveballed y'all with the poison ivy jokes, homie. But Chris, oh, did you look at the IMDb score, Seth? No. Oh, we got a battle then. All right, here we go. IMDb score is something point six out of ten with thirty eight thousand eight hundred and ninety two votes. That's a lot. I didn't expect it to be that high. Something point six. My heart's telling me two. Two. I'm going to say four. Four. Both of you. Wrong! It actually has a 6.6. Mm, really? Surprising. Okay. But again, when I saw the number was 38,000, I was like, there's probably a lot of people that gave it 10s out there. I bet you. Mm-hmm. I bet it'll be higher when it come out on Criterion because there's going to be a whole audience that watches it and be like, oh, this is the fucking art. Just because Criterion oh, put it out. I can't wait to hear your reaction to these. There are both scores on Rotten Tomatoes, critics and audience. They're fresh, aren't they? I'm not telling you. What do you think the critics gave it? Seth, did you see these? No. Nah. Oh, hell yeah. Here we go. So, yeah, what y'all think the critics gave it? Let's say 70%. 70. I'm going to say 60. Both of you. Wrong! Way too high. It's rotten as fuck. I'm going to go 33. 33. 24. 24. Both of you still. Wrong! Critics, 38%. Seth was close. Now, what about that audience? Chris, the results may shock you. Audience score. Mm-mm, that's the one that's going to be probably <laughs> like 60%. Think about what the IMDb score was and think about what the audience score might be. I'm going to say 70 something because if you actually heard of this movie, you probably like weird crap like this. A 70. I already said that. Except seven. Brendan. That's true. And Delo Movies that gave us the Warriors last week, he also said that it's one of the worst movies he's ever seen. So, two people. So, you said what, Chris? You said what? You said 60 something? 60. Yeah. 60? Would you say, Seth? 70 what? No, I said 70. Oh, just straight 70. All right. Well, both still. Wrong! 
<laughs> it's higher than 70. <laughs> Not much higher, but it is higher. One more shot. 72. 72. 71. 71. Wow. Wrong! Both of you kind of PJ. It is 73%. Gummo, as stated by Seth earlier, is written and directed by Harmony Korine. I have never seen any of his other movies. I just know, I, I know of him mainly through just, I guess, film talk osmosis and because Brendan fucking hates him. And <laughs> you've talked about mm-hmm. it many times. I think the big movie. Like the big mainstream one I know that I hear people talk about that I actually heard about was Spring Breakers. That's a good one. And legitimately, the only reason I know people love that movie or went to go see it is because it had all them little Nickelodeon and Disney chicks and they're half naked. That's yep. <laughs> well, Chris, Chris thank you. I've heard, I heard of it and I've seen pieces of it, but I've never seen the whole thing. But yeah, so it's directed and written by Harmony Crane. It's starring Linda Manns, Rich, or Max Perlich, Jacob Reynolds. Chloe Savini, I don't know if that's how you pronounce that name, but I saw that name. I was like, wait, I actually know somebody in this movie? Jacob Sewell and Nick Sutton. Were you there when we did American Psycho, Chris? Might have been there, but I don't, maybe, was that on camera? I think, I know it might have been just me and PJ, but Chloe Savini, she was actually in American Psycho. She was the girlie that he actually, like, let live. He was like, you can go. I won't kill mm. you. She was eating ice cream. She put the little spoon on the table. He was like, put that shit on the motherfucking lid. I love American Psycho. I don't care. But yeah, no, and then you know the thing about this movie too, Chris, that made me actually interested in it. But then I was highly disappointed when I read trivia, is it takes place in Ohio, dog, our home stomping grounds. Yeah. I'm in Cali now, but damn it, I'm from Ohio. Oh, ten. Yeah. That's right. It was uh, what is it? Something Ohio. Zinnia. Uh, Zinnia. How far is that from Columbus? Because I know I it's it. Youngstown. It's like near Youngstown. Yeah, it's not that far from where we were. It is an hour and five minutes away from Columbus, Chris. So you can go hang out with all the gummo crew if you just drive an hour away, Chris. I'd be goddamned if I go over there. Or so I thought, because it wasn't actually filmed in Zenia or even Ohio, Chris. Nope. Which was disappointing. I was like, oh, I get to see Ohio. I mean, it looks like it. Granted, I don't. I didn't actually see where it was. I just saw things that it wasn't filmed there. You remember? Do you know where it was filmed, Seth? Uh, Tennessee, I think. There you go. I about to say it looks a lot like. The outskirt, the non-city parts of Ohio, right from the jump. I had I was already confused because you get the opening titles, and it's a. I just wrote in my notes somebody singing about some pussy, and there's a guy I just put in my notes Bunny Kid or Bunny Boy. I think it's actually titled in the IMDb His notes as Bunny, Bunny Boy. Boy. There, there you go. To explain, he got on shorts, he got on no shirt, and he got on pink bunny ears, like straight out of motherfucking Christmas story type shit. He just took the head part off. That's what it looked like. Mm-hmm. And he's standing over top of the little highway overpass, and he's like spitting down that car like a little asshole. Yeah, he's, he's pissing on him. Like, he did. Man? That's right. He did pull the dick out and start pissing on him. Asshole shit, but stuff that they do in Ohio. There was actually a big story where some little fuckers rode a damn shopping cart off of one of them highway things one time and actually almost killed somebody. Or did they kill somebody? I can't remember if they killed him or almost killed him, but they fucked somebody yeah. up. Damn. No, yeah, that was probably like 2015, 2014 back in that. I was in my apartment when it happened. That- there had to be kids that ain't have shit to do. Well, as you see, like I said, Zen Yo How in real life don't look that far off from what you see in this movie, so they probably didn't have shit to do. But the whole story happens because apparently a tornado swept through Zen Yo Ohio, and he actually goes into real graphic detail talking about, you know, how you see people or kids flying through the sky with the tornado. Yeah, it's one of PJ's favorite things, a montage. A montage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not like Twister or nothing out here in these streets. They ain't showing stuff flying around, but he's just talking about it as they have like stock footage or tornadoes. The one thing they did show is that there was like somebody's house had an antenna dish up top and there was like a dog all fucked up inside the antenna. That's the only thing you really see. The rest of it is all just told to you. Like somebody, we found that body, but we ain't never find his head. That type of thing. And I'm going to just go ahead and say it from this point forward. Christopher, Seth is giving us something crazy here. Because we can't really talk about this movie like we normally do. There's not much of a plot to follow. If we did the plot, this would be a five-minute podcast. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it, Chris, when I was watching this movie. You know what this movie feels like. Right. It feels like the show. Where we have, we got our main plot. We got our main thing we talk about, but then we tangent off into every goddamn thing else. So we this can. movie is like the movie equivalent of the Home Video Hustle podcast in some ways. Take it as good or bad, however you want to take it. But that's what I thought watching this damn movie. Because, I mean, the first thing you see post-credits is a little homie grabbing motherfucking cat and drowning it inside of a thing full of water. A little, what do you call it, barrel full of water. Got yeah, dummy kills. Exactly. Dummy. There's a lot of dummy cat kills. So, and that's what I was, when I was watching this movie, I was like, immediately when I saw that shot, I was like, oh, this is why Brennan hated this movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
even though I did, I had to watch through the credits. Because all the pet I, lovers out there do not watch this movie. I mean, technically, like Seth said, they are dummies, though. So it ain't like they. I mean, I was confused about this, so that's why I had to sit through the credits. I was like, I gotta see if the little humane society thing is in this credits. I gotta see, and it actually is, Chris. There's the you know, <laughs> no animals were actually harmed in the making of this picture type shit. But when you're watching Gummo, you don't know what to fucking expect. I was watching this whole movie. It's like, what is what is going to happen next? You know what happens next after that cat gets drowned, y'all? Titty lumps. Yeah. At the drive-in. One of the main characters, what the fuck was his name? It's like Tumblr. Tumblr. Is filling on some breastesis. And he's like, you got a lump. And she's like, what? And she starts squeezing and shit. I was actually laughing at the way he was doing it because he was copping fill on that titty. But he was almost doing like a screwing motion. Like he was like, "What is he trying to unscrew her titty? What is he doing?" And then he said he the thing to, about the lump. He's trying to get the, the whole ra- everything. I he guess. Well, he's he trying to get that three sixty motion. I was like, "I want to feel every part of this titty because I don't know when I'll be able to do this again." Right. I guess. But then I just assume, oh, he maybe he felt that lump. And he just feeling around for the lumps. So I hope you got this Patreon video so you can see what I'm doing with my hands, everybody. But what'd you say, sir? He's not a trained mammogram. This he's an amateur, you know, feeling for the lump. So yeah, you know, I just this is what I do on my spare time. I just feel for them titty lumps. Mm-hmm. And I actually didn't think this was gonna come back because legitimately, after he tells her that, it just hard cuts away from that. But it actually yeah. does come back later, shockingly. And as we actually get introduced to Tumblr, Seth, tell me about Tumblr. Explain him for the audience, please. Uh, he's a misunderstood young man who's eventually going to grow up and do something positive. No, he's a terrible person. Um, <laughs> everyone in this town is terrible. Um, I like to describe this movie as an episode of Cops if the police never show up. So Man. No good role models in this show, in this movie. Or as Cameron would probably say, Roll Tide the movie. Man. Both of those. <laughs> both of those could go on the fucking back of this DVD box criterion if you ain't made it yet. But what he said, though, especially like when you watch Cops back in the day, maybe even now, I don't even know if it's still on, but when they would see the little hillbilly hick town dudes and they'd be out there with like the half a wife beater ripped up and shit just with half the mouth full of teeth. And just like, hey, you motherfucker, come over and got my dad. That's this whole movie. Like Seth said, if no cops come, which yeah. they probably should have on several occasions. One in big one in particular. But we'll talk about that later on. But that's one of your main characters. The other main cam- character yeah, is a guy named Solomon. Now, Chris, you do the honors. Tell me about Solomon. <laughs> Solomon is just this little shit kid that just never has a smile on his face. Him and the other kid just go around. I can't remember his name. For the life of me. Tumblr? I tried to remember his name. Uh, is that you talking about? Uh, Daughtry or what's the name of Oh, I don't Not know. Tumblr. Oh, Tumblr? Yeah, the one that he was explaining. Yeah, him, him and the homie that's killing the cats. Yeah, they, yeah that's they, Tumblr. Yeah, that's, that's all they're doing is going around um, with BB guns hunt, hunting for cats. That's like the main thrust of the movie, too. Like, you ask, like, what is the plot? It's them trying to make money because what they're doing to just explain it all now because I'm a freaking frown and forget later if I don't do it now my way. but shit's fucked in this town since the tornado came everything's fucked up so it's all it's poor it's all run down look depressing as hell so to make money they go around popping cats with BB guns or whatever and then they sell them to a grocery store clerk who then in turn his words sells them to a Chinese food restaurant Bruh, <laughs> when that, when that, Ohio. you know, I'm no, telling topical. I'm telling, look, legitimately, like, let me, let's get into a little background here because we from Ohio, we from Columbus, Ohio. But when I, before I moved out here to California, I lived in a place called Obets. Obets is right there on that motherfucking outskirt line. You go one direction, it looked like normal big city, you go the other direction, it looks like this. And there was a place, fuck man, what was it called? It was like, possum pizza or some shit and it was always like a rumor my brother oh my brother to this day says it's true i don't know for sure but they were doing shit like this at that pizza place that's what your pepperonis came from and it also didn't help that that place was also incredibly fucking racist (laughs) to where there would be stories about when black people went there trying to get a slice of their little possum pizza they were spitting in their drinks and this is in 20 Again, like 17. This ain't like back in when we was kids. I was like, I was an adult. I was in my 20s hearing those stories. Or in, even at the Dairy Queen in that same area. You know, you go up to the window and they'll just be, you know, they do the little thing where they turn the, the fucking, whatever it's called, blizzard upside down. And be like, oh, yeah, look, it's thick or whatever. <laughs> There's a story I heard. It was on the news. Somebody complained because they did that shit, but they turned it down like in their car so that the shit, it fell out in the fucking side of their car door. 
And then they try to get into a whole fight over that. So that was just an area. Yeah, that's, that's what I crash out to. Exactly. That's, so just all that to say, like, this type of shit is realistic as hell to me. We've been there. <laughs> at least I've been there. Hell, even in Grove City, I've told that story before. Me and Cameron are rolling around late at night one night. And a plum fucking red pickup truck rolled by with dudes with actual literal clan outfits on. And me and Cameron looked at each other and was like, let's get the fuck back to the main city. <laughs> let's like, get back to Columbus. Not, there's a reason why some people call it Grove Tucky. Grove Tucky. Exactly. And that started because the Grand Wizard of the KKK or whatever at that time lived there. So mm-hmm. all this bullshit wasn't, it was just like, kind of like this movie is showing. That's one thing I give the movie credit for. It shows that just under the surface, you know, just on the other side of town, this is the type of shit that's probably going on. And it's true. This is the type of shit that's most likely going on. There's certain parts of Columbus or Ohio, very uncomfortable getting through some of them areas. I remember talking to a girl and her family lived in an area that was like this, kind of. And we got in and out of that bitch as fast as possible. Because <laughs> you never know. So, yeah, no, believe me. As somebody from Ohio, it's it's not far off. It's a lot of side stuff. It's a lot of tangents. Legit, there were some scenes that came up. I didn't even write down because I'm like, it has absolutely nothing to do with anything. And it was nothing of importance. Some of them went on so long, though, that I had to write shit down. But the one thing I did write down, Chris, is that there's three girls. Don't remember all three, but I know Chloe Svenny's character's name is Dots. And mm-hmm. they had their cat. And they're like, hey, that cat looked pregnant. How they foot check foot. to see if that... Foot Foot. Thank you. The name of the cat. How did they check for pregnancy on this cat, everybody? Turn it around. <laughs> check the Check the hind parts. So there's a whole scene of them just checking this cat for if Steve is pregnant. And then they show them taping up their titties to try and make them look bigger. Something I'm not a girl, so I guess I, maybe I just don't know. But I've never heard of like using titty tape to make them look thicker or whatever. Or right, to puff them out. Puff them out. There you go. I get all oh, maybe it swells and makes them bigger because yeah. you just, I guess, I never heard of this before. Ladies. It was one of those things <laughs> I heard about in, uh, from some kind of 90s movie. I can't remember what it, which one it was. Was it this one? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure you guys about this one. <laughs> It was another '90s movie. I can't remember what it was for the life of me, but I had heard uh, there was some. There was a scene about that. It was like they were having an offhand conversation about how do I make my t- my tits look perky or something like that. And I go, you yeah, just grab some grab some tape and just go and just put it on and just start rip it, do some rip it off slow, rip it off. I ain't never heard that. I guess that's the I cooler. It was a '90s movie or was it like '90s TV show? It, who knows? It's probably some the TV I, show. Sure was the 90s. Yeah. It was a lot of weird shit. It's just like back in the day when we was younger in the 90s or 2008. So if you want to grow your facial hair out, you go eat some pussy. Like, it's the same type of thing, I guess. <laughs> Full beard, baby. Hey. But, <laughs> but yeah, you get that. And then you get a whole little section that just shows. And this is, I looked this up on Wikipedia because I did read this whole plot on Wiki to see what the fuck happened afterwards. I didn't get it from the movie. But apparently these two brothers that are like fighting in the kitchen are supposed to be skinheads. I didn't get that. That's how they're credited. Skinhead one and two. I didn't get yeah. the shit out of one another. It's it was crazy though because I wrote I did write that scene down because he's just explaining like how their parents died and they used to be like good collars shirt wearing students and now they just lifting weights and I guess doing skinhead shit and fighting each other in the kitchen. Because I yeah. thought what it was gonna happen because they start doing the play fight like hey 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 shadow boxing whatever and then they start really going at it and I thought the scene was gonna be them just beating the shit out of each other legitimately which they kind of do. But then they see ends with them like laughing, like, <laughs> what you want to get for dinner? So, like, oh, these motherfuckers just crazy. Okay. And we'll see what? Entirely pointless. Yeah, many. It's all just flavor scenes. It just adds to the, I guess the, uh, now the appeal may not be the right word, but just you're getting you locked into this environment. And now, world building. I, it, there you, there's the phrase. Thank you, Chris. See, I need help. I couldn't think of what it's called. But yeah, they, they build the shit out this world. It's just a lot of scenes like that, that, as Chris said, are entirely pointless. I don't even know if them two dudes ever even are seen again in this movie. No. Okay, so no, bam. <laughs> so moving on from that, there's a random little girl. I didn't I don't think she was one of the three sisters, but she goes on and she's telling a story about how she was, she was sexually assaulted by her dad as a kid. And then she never comes back. That's just her story. Just like it's yeah. just pieces of all this shit going on in this town. And then, yeah, we already talked about it. After this is where they go sell the cats to the guy at the store for some money. He's a black guy, which I was shocked to see. It's a so many black people are in this movie. Every time one popped up, I'm just like, what are you doing here? <laughs> they were doing all right for the most part. Yeah, they were all like kind of, none of them seemed to live like how the white folks in this movie were living. They, they was 
working at the store. There was a woman that was later on coming like in a store parking lot, getting in her car, had a nice looking car, nice looking clothes on and shit. Then you had the two little homies at the very end hustling chocolate bars. So at least I get a movie props. At least the black folks ain't doing bad. This movie made white people look bad, man. I tell you hey, I'm going to say it now to Anita, and we were just talking last night, and she asked me just out of nowhere. She was like, what is the whitest movie ever made? And I was like, why? What do you think? And she said, The Big Lebowski. I was like, that's a good Woo! one. That's, that's a good one. Cause that's, that's a take. That's a take. Well, it, Clerks, too. Clerks is also. I love Clerks. That goes right up I there, Clerks, too. But it's, it's pretty there, up there. I fucked her up when I threw out Titanic, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, think about it, man. But I was like, after watching this movie. Getting on a on a uh, shipwreck ship like that, uh, a ship that they knew was probably go- was going to hit an iceberg at some point. And then I told her too another one, I the fucking Lord of the Rings. I was like, I threw that one at her. Fantasy. I know, but but I tell you, you know what? It's all like because as Seth was just alluding to, I think now after watching this, this might be the widest movie I've ever seen in my oh, life. There's, there's also Joe Dirt. I still think this got Joe Dirt. So, Anita, if you're listening to this episode, I think this is your answer and you missed it. You could have watched it. Best thing about this shopkeeper is he asks if he wants to get paid by the cat or by the pal, but he's going to pay them the same amount of money either way. So, why did you even ask him that? Yeah, because little homie is like, oh, I don't know, whichever one. He's like, ah, I just pay by the pound, man. And I thought the same thing. She's like, well, then just give me. He already had the money in his hand. You're going to give him the same amount either way. I don't know. All right, whatever. And, you know, and funny enough, too, before he even asked that question, when the fiend scene first started, he also said, hey, I'll give you $13. So when he asked him that question, I was like, well, I thought we already figured this out. Why the fuck are you asking me? So what, I thought he was going to try and trick him or something, but he actually just gives him the money. I'm like, oh, okay. And you know, we talk all this talk about how the black folks were doing good, everybody. We looking at we running businesses and all that. And the next scene, hard cut to a group of people talking about how they hate niggas. I've been waiting this whole movie for it. And it finally came. Is that legit at this point after the they were cool with the black dude? Like almost like perfect fucking time. I was like, you know what? Maybe we won't get done dirty in this movie, even though if it's being realistic, Hard turn. even though if it's being realistic to the small towns of Ohio, it got to do this. But for a second, I thought maybe. And then I heard that hard R, John, our hard N word. I was like, Ugh. Udo reverse. That yeah. Udo reverse. Like a motherfucker. That was a turbo reverse. And that's the, and that's Probably like the most country people in that entire city. No one else in that city even had an accent like that except them. And maybe that was the point. Like these motherfucking turbo redneck hillbillies are the ones dropping that N word and other words later on as we go. Actually, there's like a whole, yeah, it's a three line stretch. Everybody about to get it, but of course it had to start with us. And they're just going on about how, oh, we got, I don't, I don't like them niggas. I don't like how they walk around. I don't like how they do this. And then the girl was like, oh yeah, but it's good to have a couple of them fighting with you though. It's like, God damn it. That's all we looked at as, folks. We, we, the, we the help, we the muscle, and we the dick to some people. Yeah. But then right after that, it's not as bad, though, but right after that, Tumblr tells a story about his brother. Seth, what's, what's up with that story? Oh, is that his brother who went to the city to become a lady? Yeah. Like, I guess with transgender or whatever. They were sniffing glue. Which makes, apparently makes you tell stories like that. I got stories. Uh, his I'll brother, tell you. Like dressed up like a lady. Lesbians just got it bad through this whole uh, whole movie for no reason. Yeah, he kept harping on that. Yeah, he he made multiple times be like, yeah, he was he was gay. He was or it was as his quote. He was wearing dresses and and Saul was like, well, was he cute? He's like, I guess he had a boyfriend, so he must have been cute enough. But then talking about the glue huffing, though, that I can talk about because when I was younger and an asshole and an idiot as a kid in elementary school, I did this bullshit because <laughs> my friends were doing it. So it even made it to the big cities of Columbus, Ohio, not just Zinnia, where we had a little Elmer's glue, glue. We didn't have the one. They had like the industrial shit. We ain't have all that. We just had the glue that you use on your motherfucking construction paper and you just twist the knob, put up your nose, get a big whoosh, and you go about your day. Like I said, dumb shit. Kids don't do this. Learn from my mistakes. Don't do that shit. I ain't do it a lot, but the fact I did it all is embarrassing now as a 33-year-old. So don't do that again, folks. Don't do that, kids. And then, after that scene where he's talking about his brother that went to the city and became transgender, the bunny dude, bunny kid, is walking around, and there's two dudes dressed up like cowboys. Two other little kids, I should say. Not dudes. Two little kids. And they're shooting him like, pluck out, pluck out, with the little BBs or whatever. And the Bunny dude falls to the ground like he actually got shot, which made me kind of confused. Like, wait, did they actually shoot this motherfucker? I was confused for a hot sack too. Like, what? 
but he's actually, I guess, playing along with him. And then these little dudes start going crazy. I'm gonna just is that it right there? There you go. Fuck the cops! I know, man. Fuck them, kiss my ass. They're only ours, asshole. I know, man. But what's the matter with them? They mad because we get more pussy than they do. <laughs> Oh, it cut off right there. But, you know, it goes on way longer than that. Yeah. But, yeah, he's just sitting there fucking with him. It looked like, I thought, I didn't know what they was going to do to the little bunny homie, but eventually the scene just ends after they drop, like, multiple slurs at him. They thought he turned into more than, like, four and six. Yeah. Because they drop, well, they drop slurs against uh, gay people, for sure. They drop slurs against Hispanic people, for sure. They might have threw slurs against us in there, for sure. <laughs> like, everybody was getting it in that scene, like a motherfucking machine gun round. You get a hit. You get a hit. You, you get, get racism. You get racism. Everybody gets racism. That's basically what it was. They convinced their parents of these kids to like let them be in these movies because like I can't even imagine. I was thinking that too during certain scenes. I'm like, I, I can only imagine the parent on the side is either like really uncomfortable with their decision or they're real uncomfortably with it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on, you tell them motherfuckers. It's one of those two things. <laughs> and I, I very much wonder which one it was. But another little quick tangent that doesn't go any fucking where in this movie is a kid named Eddie out there playing. Was he playing tennis? What the fuck was that he was playing? Yeah. Yeah, like against the wall. He yeah. looked like a Jim Carrey. He did, I actually had to look this dude up. I'm like, why does this cat look familiar? And I looked, he was only in gum. I was like, oh, he just looked like somebody. But that chick Dot, though, from the beginning of the movie, the one I was out there playing with the tape on her titties, she got a crush on homie, apparently. And they're watching him from the gate. And they end up talking to him. He's telling them all about how he got ADD and Ritalin. And ever since he started taking the Ritalin, he plays better now and all this other shit. Then it fucked me up because it actually took me back to the 90s. I completely forgot about Ritalin. That's something I ain't heard I since I was a kid. I did not because I was like, I was right there with you. I, I took I took it about probably about young, uh, younger than him. Did you? I don't remember it's that. Like, like It's like first second grade something like that oh shit they must not told us back then i don't remember hearing that it was real short time though. Uh, like, it's where they they uh i think they diagnosed me as ad add at the time and then they put me on ridland for like a couple months and then i just went to a t- child psych- a child psychologist and mm. they just said he don't need that oh so even if safe was like yeah get that motherfucker off. that was the thing they tried to give it to us too back in the day i think that was one of the things they just tried to give out to everybody around that time Cause me and Cameron and mom told them both "fuck you" to both times when they tried to get me Cameron on that shit. But no, I just had. I don't even know if it's still a thing. I wonder if they even still get that shit out. There. I know there's a thing now, and I just saw a video of it where they're like giving kids like melatonins and shit, and they're telling people not to do that. I didn't even know that was a thing that was really going on. That's what uh, parents would give to to the kids that would not go to sleep at night. Yeah, yeah, that's what they were saying. Give him a small dose of melatonin to put him to sleep in. I, I guess it's going to have some long-term term effects. I wouldn't even chance that shit. Down the line, what if that makes anesthesia do not work as, well, work as well on you? I never did it with melatonin, but legitimately, I had a long period, especially after I had that hernia and I couldn't sleep. Mm. I used to uh, take Z-Quil. Mm-hmm. And I would take that shit, and it got to the point where it, it didn't feel like it was working. And then one time, I remember taking that shit, and it knocked me out for a minute. <laughs> I was like, almost a whole day went by. And then right. after that, I started sleeping hard as fuck. So it was like it went from like feeling like it wasn't doing nothing to like all of a sudden it's like I'm fucking dead, bro. I think it's probably got a small dose of melatonin in it. Probably, but I ain't ever take no Ritalin though. No. But I just that was like a blast from the past when I heard that shit. I was like, oh hell mm-hmm. yeah, I forgot about that. Next thing that happens, another random scene that the character one of the characters does come back. The other one I don't think does. But there's a dude that's just like crying on a motherfucking couch, and it's like a little little person black dude with him. With a giant head. Yeah, like he could tell he got some type of he deformity with his head. And he's just trying to get a kiss from him. And the black dude says blatantly in the scene, you know, I'm gay or whatever. But he still was like, don't fucking kiss me, dog. He's like, I, I'm gay, but not for you. Exactly. Very, pretty much. Without saying that. That was the director. That was the director? Yeah, that's Harmony Corrine. He's a weird guy. Oh, shit. That does make this even weirder then. Because I was going to say this character is like weirdly written, but... <laughs> he wrote the shit, so I guess that makes sense. Whose house was that? 
May probably his. <laughs> well, I don't, actually, I don't. Maybe it was the black dudes. I don't know. I did see that he got a lot of people from whatever town or whatever to do this shit, but I don't fucking know. Because the whole scene is him just trying to get a kiss and dude just being like, no, and him just begging and crying. It's so, like, oh, I've been rejected by everybody and this and that. It's just, it goes on forever. Like, I'm going to go ahead and say it now because I don't remember what scene and what it was, but I did timer checks with this movie. And I wrote them down every time I did. I checked the timer three times. Mm-hmm. I checked the timer at the 43 minute mark. I checked the timer again at the 50 minute mark. And then I checked it for the last time at the 79 minute mark. So I did too. It was points where I'm just like, what the fuck is coming up next? Like, there's nothing going on, bro. <laughs> it's world building the movie is what this feels like. I literally like. did the same thing and I had the, I had the, my timer on. the. I was looking at the time the whole time. You just kept the timer minute. up? No, I just had, I had it, I had it up on the last 20 minutes. Oh, oh for the whole 20 minutes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, count down, like, just get it over mm-hmm. with. But we almost halfway through the movie, though, so we almost done, Chris. Like I said, there's nothing but little skits going on throughout this movie. And the next one, this is actually a big plot point, actually. I'll take that back. This ain't a skit. Because the kids found out that somebody hustling in on their cat business, some kid named Jared or something. And Jared they with. Jared, well, there you go. And they went to confront homie. And I thought they was about to like start scrapping, but I guess dude starts talking about how he's doing it to help out his grandma or something. He got a catatonic grandma that's like 90-something years old, and he got a bather and do all this other shit. So he out there mm-hmm. killing cats to get a little bit of extra money. And I thought that this was going to be the end of it. They're just like, oh, well, shit, we can't fuck with him, but we'll come back to this later, folks. Yep. But first, we got to go out here on, and pimp out this sister real quick. Because I had to hit Wikipedia during this thing. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Because Solomon and, and Tumblr go to somebody's house. And Tumblr like, hey, look, I need some pussy. And the dude is like, all right. And Solomon's like, me too. And he's like, oh, both of you? And the little dude opens up his door. He's like, hey, put on that little bathrobe thing or something like that. And Tumblr gets in there and starts fucking. And then it makes the scene even weirder. The brother, you don't even, I don't even know if, let's see if they said this is his brother yet. But he peeks open through the top of the door and is like watching his sister get smashed up by Tumblr. And then he yeah, come out. And, it, it, but it gets weirder because then Solomon go in there and you find out that not only is homie pimping out his sister, his sister disabled. So it's like, oh, shit. And she made sure, though, I got to give her props. She Before Solomon came in there to put that dig in there or whatever, she was like, hey, did you clean yourself first? Because I was like, oh, I didn't think she was going to ask that. Because she probably has the nicest looking room in this whole fucking movie. That was an oddly sweet scene. Yeah. And a perverted, like a really creepy kind of way. Well, tell me about it, Seth. Well, like a little ugly boy going in to meet the uh, <laughs> little girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't like calling people kids ugly, but there were some. They purposely do him no favors. <laughs> yeah, they do nobody any favors at all. So <laughs> I think you're good on this one. So I'm guessing she knows him from school or from somewhere. She asked, like, could they talk? To- they somehow mentioned that they knew each other. Like you said, she asked him to like smell his wrist to see if she washed <laughs> or if he washed. Even though she didn't wash, you know, after what just happened with the other dude. But I guess that doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess he don't care. Thankfully, they didn't show anything. That's I was. That's what I was scared of. Yeah, I'm like, oh god, no. I was terrified that that was coming because with everything else in this movie, like they gonna show this shit because they technically like, accept so it underage too. We already got a um, underage titty, so I'm I'm kind of scared. Exactly. You don't know where this is going. <laughs> hey, go listen hey, to Code 45. Skin deep for that scene. No, no, no. We don't need no skin deeps here. Code 45 is safe until somebody we'll makes them watch it. It'd be negative four. Code 45 is coming. Somebody going to make you watch it. And you're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. And you just hard cut to a scene of Tumblr and Solomon just whipping a fucking cat. That's hanging from like a tree branch or something. <laughs> so more cat abuse. If you don't like that type of thing, you don't watch it. One of the biggest surprises in this whole fucking movie, though, maybe that's why the budget was so high. Solomon's down in his little basement or whatever. He's lifting little weights and fucking Madonna starts playing in the background. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he got a little radio, a radio back there. He turned on. Yeah, I did not expect it to be Madonna, though. That, that was the pay- most modern thing in this whole movie. Man. I was like, shit, that's where that budget went. That's at least a million probably right there. Madonna. I mean, that's where the money went to pay Madonna. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Well, you know where the money really went. To some motherfucking tap dancing shoes, Chris. Tell me about his mama down there. It, I feel like his, his mama uh, just 
don't have nothing to do with herself. She's trying. She's trying to uh, cheer him up. I guess is that what she was doing? I mean, she wanted him to smile. Oh, yeah, okay. she's trying to get him to smile. So she's trying. To, she's trying to cheer him up. I don't know if like they're both going through it. If their the dad passed away or something recently. So she started tap dancing to make him smile. I guess the gun didn't work. So we just go tap dance. You would think the order would be backwards. You tap dance first and then maybe pull a gun out. But then she started with the gun though. Yeah, let you no, know we ain't fucking around. Had me at the at the um at the tap dancing. <laughs> That lady's dancing with some top-notch uh, toe tapping. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. She was bojangling it up in that motherfucker. And then there was a point where you got that awkward long take like, where she's just in the camera and you just hear her. <laughs> <laughs> she thought she was killing it. Yeah, she was going hard in that little I, mirror. It's called mugging the camera. Like I'm literally mugging the camera. Because like, <laughs> breathing hard. I was like watching it like, uh. I'm like, is he going to hit her in the back of the head with a chair? Like, wh- why are we lingering on this shot? And then it just goes away. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, Jesus. I didn't know what was coming. This movie, I didn't know what was coming. Like, this movie could go any fucking where at this point. Right. But no, that and was he, it. The, the kid's just like stonewalling her the whole time. Like, like he, maybe he blames her for her his dad or something. I don't know. I, you know, I thought that's what it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more abusive. Because I thought she was going to be like, oh, you you the reason that he ain't around. Or some shit. It never goes there. But that's where I thought, oh. like, Chris was probably going. But Nope. It's just tap dancing and burners. That's all you got here. Mm-hmm. I had to write this down, even though it does nothing for the movie. There is an extended fucking sequence of arm wrestling. Oh, yeah. Again, I'm just expecting violence. You kind of do get violence, but not the kind I thought was coming. Tumblr and I think it was his dad. They arm wrestled Tumblr B team. And there's some dude that just like, I thought he was going to get punched because he's just like, oh, he beat your dad. He beat your dad. So he was like sing song and something at him. And I'm just waiting on the dad to like go ape shit. Because he's sitting there like he's holding it in. Like it's coming. But it never fucking happens. But then they have two girls arm wrestle. And one girl just beats the shit out of the other girl. It's not even a real match. And then there's, a, there's this like big dude in the background. He was trying to find some beer. They ain't had no more beer. So he was already frustrated. And they get him down there. And he got to arm wrestle the little, uh, little black dude from the other scene. That dude was trying to kiss on. And the black dude whoops his ass in the arm wrestling shit. So then the big dude gets mad and just like destroys their table, like flips it over, breaks the legs off him. of it, goes postal on that bitch, and they're clowning him in the background the whole time he's doing it. So I'm expecting like Mortal Kombat to pop off. And it doesn't. They just all join together and destroy a fucking chair. <laughs> and there's what else is this? Like everybody seems cool with what's happening for I'll- some reason. So I was wondering that too. Actually, the whole scene, like I was more worried about the girl that was sitting right there because I'm like, he he's throwing that chair on, like he gonna bomb her with that chair, right? It came close a couple of times. Like she gonna get a motherfucking eye jammy in this bitch if she don't move. And you could tell even a couple of times, the actress even kind of turned her head, like oh shit. That's what I was worried about the whole scene. Fuck what they doing. But yeah, I don't know what the they're all because they're cheering it on. Like he's sitting there destroying the table, destroying the chair. They're all like, Woo, yeah, all that shit. And that's the whole scene. That you know, it reminded me of Ric Flair. You know, he would do the thing where he'd take his jacket off and throw it and like elbow drop his jacket. Yeah. They do the, do the motherfucking shimmy. Like they did that at one point. I swear that I thought they elbow dropped a fucking chair cushion or something. At one point. It's crazy. The dude who did that looked like an 80s wrestler. He had like that big perm and like a mm-hmm. giant fur like chest. He looked like a wrestler. That's why I thought shit was going to pop off. Cause I'm like, oh, he looked like he can cause some damage, but he just decided to do it to the furniture instead. So that, that scene was Chris. Entirely pointless. There you go. And you go get some more glue huffing. Maybe to some people, the most disturbing part of the glue huffing scene is them huffing the glue with children nearby. To me, the most disturbing part of the scene is that there's a motherfucking kid fucking with some picture frames. And when he moves those picture frames, it's just like mad bugs crawling from under them bitches. It was like Joe's apartment. Man! I couldn't tell if they was flies or spiders or what they were, but it was a fucking oh, lot. They were roaches. Okay. Uh, I, w- I looked at the whole scene. I was like, nah. Cause like, I think they had like professional roach trainers, trainers for that scene, or that was like amateur roaches. I don't know how that works. They were they were scurrying everywhere. It'd be hard to keep tracking them right. in them motherfucking. You know what? Everybody's house, except again, except the uh, the girl that was getting prostituted out by her brother. Everybody's house in this movie remind me of an episode of Hoarders. Every fucking body's house, because they got stuff stacked up everywhere, up to the ceiling in some places. Like you look like they can't even barely get to their bed. People would watch Hoarders. I remember when we were younger and think it was staged, and it's like no. <laughs> it's really shit be like that. Just like in this movie. Again, small bumfuck town Ohio realisticness is up there. It's fucking, it looks like it really do. But that's what I thought every time I saw somebody's house in this movie, it just looked like hoarders. 
And then when he moved the paint, he moved three paintings, and each of the paintings he moved all had roaches crawling every fucking where under them. Fuck what they huffing. That shit was the gross part. And then that girl from the beginning that had the lump on her titty, you come back, they're all in the hospital room talking with her, and they're like, she's like, they're going to have to take one of my tits. And you know what that means? None of the cute guys are going to fuck with me no more, that type of shit. And when I actually find that guy, he's a, I, I take off my shirt, he he going to... Uh, He's going to ghost me and not want to call me ever again. Not want to talk to me ever again. It's the opposite of the girl from Total Recall that had the three titties. You got the opposite going on where you got one. One. What am I thinking of? Oh, that was Kung Pao. Enter the fist where the girl had just just the one big ass titty in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) Previously reviewed on the Humphrey Hustle podcast. Damn what PJ said. That's a good movie. I don't care if he didn't like it. But yeah, so that happens. And then the main plot comes back for like a quick second. Because the two kids, I guess... I thought they let Jared off the hook, but nah, they breaking in his crib. And I swear it looked like they had crowbar or something. Like they was about to go in there and whoop his ass, but he ain't there. Cause there's yeah, they're a... about to go off his face on his ass. Exactly. With the ghetto boys playing and everything, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> there is a weird thing in this movie where, like Seth was saying, black people are in the movie and they usually ain't doing bad, but it's also like there's shots where they go into the girls' room and it's like boys to men pictures and yeah, shit on the wall. Yeah, I was going to say that. They got a boys to men poster out of nowhere, which was just like... Seems completely out of place. And and one of the kids is even, they have a fucking Bone Thugs and Harmony shirt, I think I saw. So it's like, it's weird. It's like black people in this movie are in the peripheral view, but they we are there. But it's like, we're there as, how, how do I put this? <laughs> it's like, we're showing them like a, a step higher than everybody in this movie. Like we got the, the musicians, we got the dude that's in the store at work, and you got the woman in the parking lot with the nice cars. Like we doing well in this movie. And of course, when we doing well and they ain't, they like to call us niggas. So that's why that scene was there. I'm just saying, you know, that's my interpretation of this shit. But I didn't notice that, as, though. It's crazy. As Paul Moody once said, everybody want, everybody want to be nigga, but don't want to be nigga. Damn right. Exactly. But <laughs> but they at Jer- back at Jared's house, though, that just reminded me to bring that up. But they're looking around through his stuff. And Solomon is going through his drawer. And he sees like he's got porno mags. But as Solomon says, he got the gay ones. Mm-hmm. And then right around that time, homeboy's in the other room, and he's found some home videos of what's his name? Uh, what the fuck was his name? I won't say Solomon. Jared. Jerry, thank you for Jared. The kid Jared, like I don't know if he was acting or if that's how he really is. If that's not his real personality, he's a good actor because he was weird as all hell. Yeah, he was on the video. He was he had the, the girls' clothes on. He was like posing and shit. And because in the scene where they first talked to him, there was a dude next to him, so I assume that was the homie that was probably filming this shit. But he and there posed out, and that's where they're like, oh, shit. They don't really make a huge deal out of it, but if you didn't get what was going on, that's when they show Solomon with the gay mag. Like, oh, he got the gay ones. It's like, yeah, we get it. <laughs> we we know what's going on. Yep. Before I go any further, it was on the video screen. Seth got on a motherfucking Killer 7 shirt, so he already gets mad points from me for knowing yes. what Killer 7 even is. Hell yeah. One of my favorite yeah. games of all time. Put the shit on PlayStation 5 and Xbox, motherfuckers. I will pay for it. I don't know if you got a PC. That's how I play it. I got a Steam Deck. I don't got the PC. But I want it on the PlayStation, you motherfuckers. But yeah, no, they find that video. But then they actually go into the other room and Homeboy's grandma is there on the motherfucking life machine, life support. And they're sitting there talking like, yo, is she dead? And he tells Solomon, like, shoot her in the foot with the BB gun, see if she reacts to it. (laughs) He just shoots her in the foot with it. No reaction. So Homeboy is like, she ain't really alive. This ain't no way to live. She's probably dead. Exactly. And turns off the cool. machine. And she has no real reaction to it. Again, she is fucking catatonic. So I guess she pretty much is only being survived by that machine. So I have some people that might be like, he doing her a favor. And some people, I'm sure, will be like, oh my God, what have you like, done? That's, that's homicide. Exactly. Some people would say. That's murder. Murder. <laughs> like, does Jared have any parents? Because otherwise, why is a little kid the only person in that house taking care of a catatonic old lady? It's funny because other than... Wasn't that Solomon's mom? There really ain't no parents in this movie. I noticed too. The kids really? are just fitting for their lives out here. It's probably why it's so fucked. Up. Well, the, the girls have their their I guess the uh, their mom and some, and like aunt there. You know the big two big girls that was sitting with them. Oh, I forgot about that scene. You're right. See, that could have been sisters. I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't I, know who that I, was. I can't, you can't tell really. But <laughs> they look old enough to they could be there. It could be, but it's just even with that, it's still a very huge lack of parenting going on in this motherfucking Zenny, Ohio. But after they kill homeboy grandma, I don't think, yeah, homie never shows up, does he? 
We never get no real continuation or finishing of this plot. Nope. So fuck it. It ended on murder. She wrote. No, no, no. The three sisters are at the bowling alley because their cat is missing now. Oh, foot, foot. We need to find him. And so they're handing out flyers. And this is where you see the black woman in the parking lot like we've been talking about. But they say, fuck it after a while. They just go to a bowling alley and just kicking it. And some mm-hmm. dude comes up and is like, hey, is this your cat? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, well, I know where your cat is at. Uh, come get in my car, which immediately is like, oh, no. Yeah, that's violence. a red flag. You forgot the deaf people, though. Like the arguing deaf people at the bowling alley. Oh, they were actually deaf? I thought they were just talking shit about them. No, they were. No, like, I think they were, they were like, like, they were like, oh. like, like, at first I thought they were, like, doing, like, air guitar, but then, like, I realized they were doing, deaf and they were, like, just was doing one another. Yelling, was actually, like, probably yelling. Oh, I just thought that it was just, like, fucking redneck talking. <laughs> I didn't think that's what, I thought it was the crystal meth talking out there. But yeah, so that's going on. Again, more of that character world building for you. They got just deaf people out there arguing at the bowling alley. When he first showed up and said it, I didn't think of nothing. But when they showed him in his car, I was like, oh, no. Because it's like, what, did you just see my cat yesterday? And now you're going to drive? How the fuck you just see my cat? Motherfucker, like, no, this seems fishy. And of course, they get to a certain point. And they're like, how much farther is it? Exactly. Get the Metal Gear Solid exclamation point pop up. Because... They're like, how much further we got? And they're like, oh, let me check my map. And let me just go get it out the glove box. And he just blatantly reaches for that pussy. And, of course, they're like, hey, I did love it. And I loved it because the subtitles were burnt into the version I watched. So, they're like, hey, what are you doing trying to touch her coochie? And the, subtitle, to catch her coochie. <laughs> and the subtitles spelled it K-O-O-C-H-I-E or some shit. They put the K's in there. I was fucking, that made me laugh more than anything in this movie is that way that was subtitled. Because if you listen to the two live crew, you know how it's spelled C O O C H I E. But you know, <laughs> the two live crew. But he's trying, and he blatantly like keeps doing it. Like after they, they're like smacking, they like, no, no, stop it. And I actually, you know, I forgot about that. Before they even get to the map part, I knew he, something was up with him. He's like, hey, you know Freddie Prince? And they're like, no. Like, oh, well, I'm his brother. And they're like, okay. Like, you ever see Jake and the Fat Man? And they're like, no. So I was like, okay. That's a red flag right there. So I, what, just take me to my fucking cat. Why are you asking me all these questions like that? Yeah. Because you're trying to get that like, ooh, he's a celebrity. Ooh, shit. Nope. Not that <laughs> exactly. Man. I'm like, I know Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> you seen them Scooby-Doo movies? Well, I guess they weren't out yet. Tries to touch the coochie and they end up jumping out the car. And then my man just goes into full on like, oh, y'all just some hoes anyway. Or something he said. I was fucking dying. Nothing you never did before. Like, that's yeah. his voice. <laughs> no, I was in sexual assault sound funny, but that dude was hilarious in the way he was acting. It's like, oh, come on. It's nothing new for you hoes. No, no, nothing le- you ne- like, never did before. No, legit. I can't, it's Like you said, it's not the not funny, but it's funny. Because it just the, it just goes from like one to another super fast and super hard. And they end up, he just, I guess, abandons them on whatever side of town they're on, too, because he drives off. He's like, bitches, or some shit like that as he drives off. And so, oh, that's actually, the, I think they had the little girl. The little girl was like, you fucker. So they just all cussing each other out as he drives away. So they still ain't found that cat yet. He found cat, but he ain't get it, though. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> um, but. The one scene I knew about this movie, especially from pictures and everything, is the homie sitting in the bathtub eating spaghetti. And that's the next scene that happens in this movie. I'm like... Tell me about it, Chris. Why? Let's get it. I'm like, how? who who actually sanctioned this kind of frivolity here? First of all... <laughs> frivolity. First of all, this water is blacker than the ace of spades. Man. Like <laughs> Second of all, she put... Uh, he's just sitting there in the bath just chilling. She, she was... Uh, Washing his, she's over here washing his hair. Then out of nowhere comes comes up with a um <laughs> fucking tray of with milk and spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> trouble gun city right there. I mean, the I water already like, black. He can go ahead and just shit it out in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why it's black. <laughs> oh, that was so I just love that they zoom in and show him with the soap, like purposely cleaning behind the ears and everything, and then you just see the, the what the water look like, and it's like it's wasting so much time. <laughs> Washing yourself in that water is what, Chris? Incredibly pointless. There you go. <laughs> but tell me more about it, Chris. Tell me more. Tell me more. So, and she, and while he, she continues. Well, she gets interrupted by 
some kids at the door selling candy bars. No, let's say it right, Chris. There's two black kids at the door, which made me very scared for their safety. She pulled a gun out on homie earlier. I ain't know what was gonna happen here. Yeah, that could have gone. That could have gone another way. They kind of look like two mini Teddy Longs came to the door almost. <laughs> yep, holla holla. I, mean, I thought they were dressed more like MC Hammer. They had like those glasses and like, they had, like the plaid <laughs> hair and like the black shirt. You know what? That, that made that's on cue too because, like I was saying earlier, with the the Bone Thug shirt. I mean, granted, Bone Thug still was making music in 1997, but that was past their big heyday. It's almost like you know when they talk about when the Super Bowls happen and they make winning uh, shirts for both teams and they give the other ones to like the poor countries. I like hear you got the losing team ones. It's almost like here where everything is super outdated. Everybody got like old shit, so it would make on track. I guess if these kids are also from Zinnia that they got like some old MC Hammer shit that's been played out for probably like the last five years. Yeah, <laughs> but that, but it's new to them though. Yeah, she up by just pays them a dollar for for a crunch bar. They uh, go over to the side and it's like. <laughs> yeah, look at this. We make it. We making all this money. We going we gonna uh, keep collecting all the ducats. <laughs> you <laughs> said get all them ducats. Now, I was gonna say somebody actually sampled that. Diplo has a song called "Money, Power, Respect" that like samples that part, which is actually really dope. Oh, that's what's up. I didn't know that. I, I do love that little scene. They're just sitting there counting their money up. Like hell yeah, we getting paid out here off these motherfuckers. I love it. Mm-hmm. She takes the chocolate bar back to. Um, Solomon takes it back to Solomon and says, "Here, here's some dessert." Gives it to him. He drops it in the fucking black. That's what I was hoping you was gonna bring up. Okay. <laughs> and I said, "God damn!" And what's he do after he drops it, Chris? He still eats it. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm I just like, dumb, oh man. god, this kid, this kid don't know shit. Oh, Chris, and then and then to add salt to that wound that you got open from that scene. He takes those shit out of the dirty water, starts eating it, and then for like a good, it had to be like thirty seconds. That scene just goes on with none but mouth noises. It was the loudest, wettest sounding, like chewing, like the mic was just like right on the bar on that. People would be dying. It was bad. It was like what? And it just kept going, bro. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is this? And you know, uh, while she was playing with his hair, it had had the shampoo. Some of that had to have fallen in that fucking spaghetti. Oh, Chris, no, it did. That's the thing, because there's a point where she's doing the little, she gives him the little alfalfa sprout before she opens mm-hmm. up the door, and it's like, it shows like the little tip go leaning down, and then she comes back in there, and she gets start sopping it up super hard, and she actually does the flick, the hand flick, and that shit flicks soap right in that fucking spaghetti, Chris, as he was eating it. It actually, I was watching that shit, because I was like, like you said, it was like, it's going to get in there at some point, so I, I and it got, in the, I think I'm pretty sure it hit the milk, too, when she <laughs> flicked her hands. Because there was also a part two where I couldn't tell. It looked like this motherfucker had, it looked like bacon on the side of the fucking tub that he was playing with. I didn't know what the fuck. Or if it was just that dirty, the caulk was super old and dirty or whatever. But it looked like bacon for a second. Probably. What the fuck? No, it was bacon. It was? Yeah, they had bacon taped to the wall for some reason. Like, <laughs> I knew I wasn't tripping. And like a bunch of like dolls also, even though there's no girls in that house. That's funny. I thought I was tripping. I was like, man, that looked like bacon. And come, I guess it was. Chris, you ever had bacon on your bathtub wall? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I guess, more weird, random shit. But speaking of weird, random shit, we about to end this movie. And the next thing you see is more tornado footage. And I was thinking like, oh, shit, is another tornado coming? I don't think so. Because they got tornado footage. And I thought, like, because throughout this whole movie, there's weird little... I ain't really spoke on it because I don't give a fuck. But there's been a couple spots here and there where Tumblr is speaking into, like, a video camera or something. He's almost like a video suicide note because he's saying stuff about, oh, he's nothing worth living for, you know. If I, It's almost actually... They kind of go back and forth because when Tumblr has his little bits where he's doing voiceover, it's very nihilistic. Like, you know, I don't want to live no more. There's no point in living. Fuck this shit. And then when Solomon does it, it's the complete opposite, where he's like giving more positive, uplifting things, so I guess showing the differences between their mindsets or whatever. So I thought when legitimately this movie was going to end because we had that whole extended scene with him in the bathtub with his mom being all happy eating spaghetti. I thought we was going to see Homeboy with a motherfucking bullet in the back of his dome at some point. <laughs> I thought that's where this movie was headed. And we didn't get that. We got Tornado. So I was like, okay, so the movie's going to end with another Tornado coming through and fucking everybody up? Is that we just going to kill everybody again? <laughs> but No. The tornadoes come. The bunny boy's running through a fucking field. He grabs a dead cat. I'm assuming this is foot foot. 
and he legitimately breaks the fourth wall. Actually, he stands in front of the camera and just holds the dead cat right up into the camera. And the music is like crescendoing and going hard. So I'm expecting once he holds that cat to the camera after a couple of seconds, fade to black credits. That should have been the end of the movie. They should have ended it right there. It, it felt like the natural end of the movie. But before it ends, though, you just got this one little, I guess, little stinger, I'll call it, where the there was been a girl earlier in the movie that she was like shaving her eyebrows or something in the fucking mirror. I don't remember why. That's one of the notes I didn't write down because it didn't seem like it was going anywhere. But she's in laying in bed with her sister, mom, somebody else, mom, whatever the fuck going on. And they start doing a prayer. They keep saying, like, Jesus loves me and this and that. And then somebody, it sounded like legit off screen, was like, yo, cut that shit out or something like that. They said off camera. I go to bed. I didn't hear that. Yeah, somebody said something like, yeah, Chris, like, go to bed or cut I'm that out. Bed. Time to shut this. It was something like that. Yeah. And then. When she says that, the movie kind of goes to black. So I guess that was his little way to be like, hey, look, she shut it down. The movie's over now. And then you get your credits. And you get your like rock and roll screamo shit going fucking crazy in the background. And that was it. That was Gummo. <laughs> oh, did you? Did we, we missed a uh, scene where Bunny Boy was in the pool with Dot and Helen just making out. That he was deserved a- something good in his life. It, and that's what I was going to bring that up later. Once we really start talking about the movie, but fuck it, since you brought it up now. Is the bunny boy a real character? Is he supposed to be, and I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking super hard, like, is, is he supposed to be like the personification of something in this town? Is he the personification of the good in the town? And that's why he found the cat at the end? And that's why he with the girls in the pool? I'm not thinking way too fucking hard about this shit. <laughs> I, I have um, some trivia here. Oh, let's get it. So, okay, so let's see what we got here. From the top, other cast members recruited during film's uh, lengthy pre-production period. Harmony Korine just approached people on the street, bowling alleys, and fast food <laughs> restaurants asking them to play a part. That sounds right. It looks like just random ass people from Zeno. <laughs> he does shit like that. Yeah. It Harmony works for Karin this. Harmony and his camera operator were frequently chased out of locations by angry fathers with shotguns who suspected them of doing po- child pornography. I, I could see that. You already know this was... Filmed in about 20 days with a budget of 1.3 mil. Where the fuck did 1.9 came from? Maybe that was the Madonna money. I went over it. Oh, uh, <laughs> post production, I guess. Mm-hmm. In addition to being a co star of the film, Chloe Savini designed the costumes. She found most oh. of them in the thrift stores around that. Okay. Show. I was about to say, yeah, the costumes, air quote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> film takes its name from the fifth and lesser known Marx Brother Gummo. Oh, he dropped out of their shows before the brothers became famous. Why though? I no clue. Cool. <laughs> oh, so he just like straight then. He wasn't that funny. Oh, is this because this movie's not that funny? Is what we name it, Gummo? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. One of the actors involved in the chair fighting scene. Oh, had just gotten out of prison that day. Oh, is that why he was? Was it the big guy? Maybe. One woman, Harmony Korn says, was also pregnant in that scene. Hopefully, it wasn't the one that was right there in the kill area. <laughs> Mm-hmm. This film is populated with friends from Harmony Corinne's own natural upbringing. The uh, the dwarf's name is Bryant L. Crenshaw. Oh. He was went to high school with him. Oh, okay. Somebody knew. Skinny him. brothers are friends of his as well. This looks like a very friends and family type movie and random people off the street. In the scene where Solomon's eating spaghetti in the bath, there's a piece of bacon taped to the wall behind him. He Why? says, It says, the Warner Hortzog says, when I saw a piece of fried bacon fixed to the bathroom wall in Gummo, it knocked me off my chair. Corinne's a very clear voice of a generation of filmmakers that is taking a new position. It's not going to dominate world cinema, but so what? So I guess it got Werner Herzog's attention when he, when he saw it. Werner Herzog does weird shit too, so I'm, I'm not surprised by that. The kid, Jacob Reynolds, who played Solomon, was 13 years old. The kid who played Tumblr, Nick Sutton was 17. Mm. Jacob Sewell, who played the bunny boy, was 14. Uh-huh. And Darby Daughtry, who's the youngest of the of the sisters, was 10. About 75% of the film scripted, and that makes sense. 75 is scripted? I thought it'd be less than that. I thought it'd be yeah, 75% actually. not scripted. It says, in the screenplay, bunny boy does talk, oh. but only during the scene in the swimming pool. What do you he say? He also explains why the word Mac is tattooed on his fingers. My parents like to call me that, Max Bell backwards is Cam. Cam is their favorite car, Camaro. Oh. He also claims that he was born with one fully grown tooth, and his parents wanted the name in plaque. Okay. 
somebody felt the need to take that out, which I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't think it would have added much, but then again, not much adds much, so. <laughs> I'm, ta- I'm not talking is a, a way better choice just because like he's more mysterious that way. Yeah, that's why I was thinking he was like some kind of weird out world thing. I don't fucking know. But <laughs> they probably cut his cut his um, voice scenes from the, from the screenplay. Probably. Like if it was just that scene, you said it wouldn't add it much any fucking way. So yeah, just leave it mysterious, like Seth said. Originally received the oh. NC seventeen rating strictly for being so nihilistic. <laughs> you can get NC seventeen for nihilism. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Not the violence, not the nudity, not the. Oh, I guess that's really the main thing. That's hilarious. So I guess on that note, we gonna fuck around and play promo, play some ads, see if somebody wanna give us money for this shit, and we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Wow, you look great. Thanks. It's because I've been listening to the So Wizard Podcast. So Wizard Podcast? That's that weekly nerdy movie review and news podcast, right? That's right. And it's available on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you get your favorite podcasts. They even have a YouTube channel, too. Hey, I'm going to go listen to So Wizard Podcast right now. Four nerds with the weekly podcast and a YouTube channel about movies. Check out So Wizard Podcast today at SoWizardPodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash MBO. Terms and conditions apply. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi said, it is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth, and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer radio show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth. Oh, I did leave one out. Oh, let's get it. (laughs) So apparently, during that scene with Harmony Corinne and the dwarf, he he was drunk. Okay. So it looked like it. He's probably drunk and ad libbing. I guess it's his movie, but yeah, mm-hmm. that scene was whatever anyway. You know what, Seth? You made us watch this. Seth, what did you think about Gummo? <laughs> so, um, this is a movie I really like. I don't know if I would necessarily call it a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really heavy on atmosphere and stylist. And style? I don't just say style. Um, this movie feels like a bad fever dream at times. It kind of reminds me of Dave Lynch at certain mm-hmm. points. I like, like the VHS effects um, where it's like really harsh looking. Um there's a lot of shots that I really like in this movie. Like the scenes of them like going down the hill on their bikes, I think is shot really well because it's like really close up on them. So I kind of always wonder how they did that. Um, like I said, this movie's an acquired taste. This is one of those movies you put on when like maybe you've had a party and like your guests have stuck, hung around too long and you want them to leave. So you put this movie on to kind of like chase people away. It'll work. Uh, six and a, no, I give it a seven. Seven, okay. Hmm. So about on par with the IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes audience. Let's go ahead and drop that average. It sounds like Chris, what you think about Gummo? <laughs> so there is a way to do a world building movie. Um, Friday, we got um, <laughs> we got clerks, we got mall rats to an extent. Mm-hmm. This is not the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mando. Yeah, um, I just. I just got the ick uh, throughout this entire movie. Like, there was, like, every other scene was giving me the ick. Jeez. I mean, I can see that, though. 
I just don't. This is not a movie I would want to go back to. So you're not buying the Criterion Blu-ray then? No. no. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up while you're talking. I'm gonna see what special features are on that. Like, you, like you said, the characters are unlikable. All, every last one. <laughs> the little dude is cool. Eh. eh. <laughs> he's, 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 the only, he's the only likable character in the whole movie. Funny boy don't say shit. And he he's barely a, he he's barely likable because he got <laughs> damn. He got the in. Otherwise. This movie is kind of uncomfortable. It was trying to make a world building type of film. I get that. It's just doing too much. Not enough for me to grab onto. So for that, would I watch this again over Freddy Got Finger? Damn it, you are. I was gonna ask you that. <laughs> I got to think about it. Gotta think Damn, about that's it. a horse race. I like Freddy Got Finger. I don't care what Chris says. Gummo better than Freddy Got Finger. Attention. He's struggling with this. Get to two. Two? Okay. Just barely. I didn't honestly God, I thought it was about to be a zero or one. I couldn't just <laughs> there's, a, there's enough in here to where if I had to watch this all day or Freddie got fingered all day, I would watch this because it's really? going on in the back. No, don't do that. You you'll commit suicide. Don't, don't yeah, I, like, I know. I know. You'd watch but this like, on repeat over Freddie Got Fingered is because it's incredibly enough, crazy. There's <laughs> enough in the background going on, like yeah, there's enough to to actually make you make you think about stuff like what's going on. Like, all right, Marvin Gaye, that's fine. I and it's where it's like there's, there's a, like a, it's the, a lot of and that, ugh, a stuff <laughs> there that you can question more than anything it has a deeper well, meaning Freddy than Freddie. Freddie got fingers, just it's not funny. You're crazy. <laughs> you said it's not funny. Well, not he's he's crazy. <laughs> That's another terrible. That movie was so bad it made my Christian mom cuss when she watched it. <laughs> and I had never heard my mom swear until like for some reason she watched like she didn't even see the whole movie. She saw like the first twenty minutes of that before like ripping the VHS out. I saw him jacking off that horse in the beginning, screaming that he was a farmer. <laughs> That's exact, I think that wasn't that about the time when camera fell asleep. No, the camera was asleep when we started it. He woke up at the scene of him jacking off the horse and then looked at us like we was crazy and turned around the opposite direction from the TV and he went back to sleep. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, no, now I got to look it up because I got, what did you get, Freddy Got Finger? Now I got to see if you want. I gave it a one, I think. Was it actually, was it that low? <laughs> Damn, was it this far back too? Shit. Freddy Got Finger, yeah, you gave it a one, shit. So I guess, okay, you did like this better than I. I guess it just like this movie twice as much. Man, more nuances in it than, than Freddy Got Fingered. I'll give you that. You know, I do like Freddy Got Fingered better. I'll say that now, but I get you. I, I, I do you. agree. If I had to watch this on, on repeat uh, for uh, an entire day, gun into the mouth. Damn. Well, I will say. Well, before I do that, here, Chris, if you want to buy your four, Criterion 4K, as a 4K. Has a new interview with Harmony Corinne, so you can talk to him. Uh, a conversation from 1997 with Corinne and Her- Werner Herzog. So there you go. Mm-hmm. An episode of Split Screen where he was interviewed from 2000. The trailer, English subtitles, and an essay by film critic Carlos Aguilar, and an appreciation by filmmaker Hype Williams. So Hype, I- he actually came back for the Criterion to talk about. It. So Hype Williams must actually just genuinely like this movie. Everybody else is uh, interviewing Master him. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Squilling at that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't care much for this movie. I, I didn't. Dis- I will say, I disagree with Brendan and Dale in saying it's the worst thing ever made. It's not even the worst thing I've seen on this podcast. We've given out fucking <laughs> zeros here, and it's not going to get a zero. We've given yeah. out negative scores before, and it ain't getting a negative score. It kind of <laughs> funny to me because, like I said, being from Ohio. And being in these rural looking areas like this a couple of times, it looks like those areas. So it is funny to just see, like I was saying earlier, like a movie that's the perspective of this little area, this little small area over here that nobody gives a fuck about or pays attention to. You actually see a movie of that. You don't see that very often. Like Seth said, there's a couple camera shots and little things they do here and there that are kind of cool, I will admit. I didn't mention it earlier, but I know there's a couple. There's, I think it's in the beginning. They're singing a fucking song. And it's like the the rooster goes cock a doodle doo or some shit like that. Yeah. And it drove me fucking crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, but, me too. But it's funny because it drove me crazy. But then <laughs> after about a minute or two, it started being a little catchy. And then it kept going. And then I was like, okay, you know, I'm done with this now. And that's like, kind of yeah, one of those things where it's like and you're you're like, why is this thing going? And then you're like, eh, it's okay. And then it goes on a little too long. You're just like, I don't, I'm done with this. Exactly. And that's like my my review for this whole movie. Is it starts out and you're just like, it's annoying. It's like, what the fuck is this? And then it, it has little things happen where you're like, it makes you laugh. You get kind of interested in just like how fucking weird it is. But then it goes past that point, and then it's like you go back to being like, eh, now it's just boring. That was like the whole stare stuff for this movie. It started out like, what the fuck is this? To me being like with the chin, like, huh, okay, it's just kind of weird, but I'm, I can see what they trying to do here. And then I'm checking the fucking timer three times. <laughs> it just, if this had been like a little short thing, like, I don't know, like some little 40 minute thing, maybe it'd been more interesting, but it just, it didn't, that 90 minutes didn't work for me. Mm-mm. And I started to get very fucking bored. It was one of those things where, like, I went to go to the bathroom. I just turned the TV up, and I didn't even bother pausing this shit. I was just listening to it while I was pissing. Like, wow. <laughs> which seems appropriate for this movie anyway. But yeah. <laughs> it just didn't hold me, man. It just, it's, I don't want to say too much, because maybe that might not be the right turn of phrase I'm trying to think of. But it just, I got the point after a while. And without a real narrative structure to really pull me fucking along with it, it just, it lost me. You can only be so weird for so long without some kind of substance to it. You can't just be weird for weird sake. You got to have something to go along with it. Right. And that's why a lot of games and movies and stuff that just want to be just weird and do it. Like, I take it back. I know it's not a movie that everybody loves, but like the Cannibal Holocaust shit, I always bring that up. That movie is just insane, graphic as fuck, and yeah, all that crazy shit. But it does have a little plot that you can follow along with. These filmmakers, super assholes. Fucking with these tribe people, get their ass murdered. Exactly. Dude, dude got to go to the jungle. Basically, dude, the, he had the exact opposite movie they had <laughs> to get their footage back. And then they bring it back and they watch it. So you get a storyline, some type of narrative fucking movement along with the weird shit. I needed that here. I needed something more than just this movie. And I think I even read it online. Harmony Crin said this shit somewhere. It's like a photo album. You're just flipping through. Looking at pictures, you're just watching random fucking scenes happen, mm-hmm. and you got like a little storyline. Somebody behind you, like, oh, that was the day that Timmy did this and that. That ain't enough. Hey, it's <laughs> like like on like Friday. The problem is Smokey fucked up, about to get killed, about to get murked by Big Worm. So they got they got to figure out how to get some money. Yeah, that's I mean, use that example for sure. It's just like there's a, a plot that's going with a bunch of little skits in between. The skits in between mm-hmm. here just, yeah. <laughs> it feels like it should have been a documentary, maybe. Honestly, you could probably show this to some no, people and they probably so. would think it was. It's kind of yeah. filmed in a way. But yeah, no, it's 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 boring for the majority of the movie. I couldn't stick with it. So I was gonna give it a three. A little bit better than Chris. But yeah, there it is. Seven, three, and two. Big gaps. It's almost like me and Chris uh, yeah, Chris and I are the critics and Seth is the audience. We pretty much gave it the exact same score as, as fucking Rotten Tomatoes. So there it is. But you know what? On that note, it's been a lot of super white shit going on. So we got to rectify that with some black stuff going on. We got we black. The, that's right. We black. <laughs> black history flashcards. Fold that ass from the urban intellectuals, baby. We got volume five, Afro, Latino, and Caribbean. And today, I'm going to tell you all about Lazaro Medina. He was born in 1965, passed away on March 4th, 2013 from Paraguay. He was the director of the ballet Camba Cua. He established the ballet in 1991, as a good year, baby, to focus on the dances of former enslaved Africans. His company is the only one with this mission. The ballet uh, created a social movement within Paraguay with human rights groups in Kambakua to help people regain the land that they lost. He created a census of Afro-Paraguayans along with Kumbakua cultural leader Jose Madinia to challenge the myth that Paraguay had no contemporary black population. We everywhere. Madinia directed ballet Kambakua for 35 years until he died. Today, the dances continue to honor Medina's legacy. Lazaro Medina. Black history. Fold that ass. You know what? Let the patron get it in first. Seth, I know you got some type of online presence somewhere. Do you want to give anybody any information about where to find you? You got anything you got going on you want to tell the people? I just want to say thanks for being here. I want to remain mysterious and not uh, disclose my whereabouts. Um, no, thanks for having me on. It's super <laughs> fun. I've been listening to the show for a long time. You put me on to a lot of other great podcasts. I'm just happy to be here. Hey, we appreciate you being here. Like I'll tell people all the time, 
in this fucked up financial landscape that we all live in, the fact that anybody even wants to give a fucking dollar at least, like, shocks the hell out of me every time we get a new patron. So we appreciate you, brother. We really do. Even though you may as watch Gummo. But <laughs> I thought it was going to be straight up fuck you, Joey, status this entire time. Y'all liked it more than I thought, so that's cool. Yeah, I, legit, I, bro, I came in. I always come into every movie giving it the benefit of the doubt. I try. But with this one, I was just like... Uh, it's probably gonna be a zero or one. I don't know, but if it, it was a three, PJ I give probably would have been on that "fuck you, Joey" status. But PJ uh, and Anita would have been said "fuck you, Seth." Like that would have been instantly probably. When I was watching this movie, I was just imagining if Anita was here. I'm just like, where would she check out at? I was debating where the fuck it would be at. Probably them paying to um to uh, slam a girl sister, old dude's sister. Yeah, his disabled sister or dad. That probably would have been. That's probably the point. That or the whole I hate niggas conversation. Oh, yeah. She would have checked out on that. Because that's before that. PJ would have just been confused. This would have been Twin Peaks for PJ all over again. Christopher, where can they find you at if they want to holla at you? You can find me on X. X. At ChrisCross0018. You can find me on Facebook at Chris Smith. And you can find me on um, Instagram and threads at CSmith0018. There it is. If you love the show and you want to holla at me or give me messages to relate to the other co-hosts, you can find me also on Twitter, a.k.a. X. X. <laughs> I don't know why that's so fun to say. At <laughs> capital H, capital V, capital H, capital P, lowercase I cast, HVH podcast on Twitter, Home of the Hustle podcast on Instagram, Home of the Hustle podcast on Threads, Home of the Hustle on Blue Sky, Home of the Hustle on YouTube, Home of the Hustle on Facebook, Home of the Hustle on damn near everything. You can just type in Home of the Hustle everywhere you go. But you really should do this, though. You know what you should do, like the homie Seth did. Check us out over on patreon.com slash home video hustle. You can help support the show. You can be like Seth and give us movies to watch. We'll watch them. We watched Gummo. We didn't fight him on that. We didn't say, oh, pick a different movie. No, you want Gummo? God damn it, we're going to watch Gummo. You're going to do it, no matter how how we got to give our phones viruses in order to watch it. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't speak on that, but this movie is nowhere to be found. Unless you find an old DVD copy or you do what Chris and I did. And <laughs> yeah, the internet will provide. <laughs> but yeah, no. Be aware you might give your phone to Super AIDS. And give it to Gummo Virus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, on Patreon.com slash Home the Hustle, we got multiple tiers. You got $1 tier, $3 tier, whatever the fuck you want to give us tier. Help support the show, get bonus episodes, full video recording of the podcast. And mm-hmm. you can make us watch from $1 tier movie once. $3 tier. You can watch it as many times as you're a patron and the cycle continues. And as we do right here with Seth, you are welcome to jump on the podcast if you want and talk about it with us. Yo. Thank you once again to the homie Seth Blackwell for supporting the show, jumping on here with us, it. getting me to check. Hey, this is a movie I was on my list to watch for years. I finally checked it off. I wasn't mm-hmm. probably ever going to do it on my own, but damn it, we did it now. <laughs> Yeah, you shouldn't watch this movie by yourself. You need like a you need an adult while you're watching this movie. I know. Yeah, I'm, you definitely need an adult. I and mean, Chris did the double whammy. He watched it by himself and on his phone. <laughs> yeah. Yes, going sir. Through some Wi-Fi issues because because some dumbass people. But I'm uh, that's just well, let's leave it at that for now. All right, I'll leave it at that then. But yeah, thank you once again, sir. We appreciate you, and I'm pretty sure you're a three dollar patron, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. So like James Bond, Seth will return. With his next Patreon pick. And I, another series we need to get back to. It's been way too long since we did James Bond. We only on the third movie. Maybe after the Hustle Holidays. But until then, I think I just got one thing left to tell everybody. And Seth, you're welcome to join in with us. <laughs> I'm Brent. Chris. I'm Seth. Let's get it. <laughs> Should I do it? Should I do it since we got guests? Here we go. Get ready. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> that shit hurts sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Have a good rest of your Friday. I, hey, I appreciate it. Have a good rest of your Friday. Have a good rest of whatever the fuck day you listen to this on. If you want to watch Gummo, you're going to have to look it up online. Like, flat out. Maybe the library got a DVD copy or something. I don't fucking know, but it it is not out there. Oh, I just got a text from Nita. I thought the library from Ghostbusters probably would have more than anything. Probably. <laughs> All right, maybe you go out to Zenny, Ohio. I wonder how the people in Zenny, Ohio feel about this movie if they know about it. That'd be very curious like to look at. It's an anti tourism video. Man, that's the anti tourism documentary. Your town. <laughs> 
especially since it wasn't even filmed there. So they probably be doubly like, what the fuck, bro? Y'all didn't even actually film it here, you bastard. <laughs> I want to know. I assure you, we are not the same. Exactly. I had a little sign like in Clerks, like, I assure you, we're not like Gummo. <laughs> so until next week, like I said, PJ should be here. He's coming on Thursday. Hello. That sounded weird. He'll He's coming here on Thursday. <laughs> I told him, if we doing four movies, one of them has to be Star Wars. So, <laughs> and the next Star Wars movie we got to do is The Force Awakens. So, hopefully, Star oh Wars will be gosh. coming. I have that on my on my shelf, and so I I need to be there. We did the original trilogy. We did the prequels. It's time to get to Disney one. So, that may be coming. That's the only one of them I have on my shelf. That's all right. I, hey, they're out there. I got them all, motherfuckers. <laughs> but until next time, peace. Peace. Nine one one, which emergency? Oh my god, bees! You said bees? ABC Thursdays. Nine one one is all new. That truck was hauling twenty two million killer bees. With a three part season premiere of that. That's enough bees to kill forty four thousand people. Is that a some bee NATO? This one's gonna stay. Help is coming. Nine one one, all new Thursdays, eight seven central on ABC, and stream on Hulu.